Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Adam Alexander with NASCAR on Fox, and today we are here to make a big announcement about our Xfinity coverage in 2018. And as most of you know, when we came back and started doing the Xfinity series in 2015, we did something very unique. Each and every week, we bring a cup regular from the garage into the booth to help with our analysis. And that has been greeted with great success. And in 2017, we said, let's take it to the next level. And we did with drivers only, bringing in Monster Energy Series drivers who would execute every position on our broadcast from an on-air standpoint. And I think everyone in here really enjoyed that, and we appreciate all of your kind words a year ago in receiving our new and unique idea. So back by popular demand is drivers only, and in 2018, this group will execute that plan on Fox April 28th at Talladega Super Speedway, and we're very excited. So I will introduce to you now those that will be a part of the plan. Once again, Kevin Harvick will be doing play-by-play -play in the booth with Clint Boyer and Joey Logano. Brad Keselowski, who won our Drivers Only race last year at Pocono, will be with us in the Hollywood Hotel. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who was on Pit Road last year, will be with Brad in the studio. On the pit lane, Ryan Blaney is back, Eric Jones, and Darrell Wallace Jr. has now joined us in 2018. So we're looking forward to hearing from this great group and all of their expertise at Talladega in a couple of months. And leading the charge is our producer, Pam Miller. And I know the challenges are many when you're working with a bunch of rookies, but how did it go for you last year, Pam? Well, I knew blending all those personalities was going to be a challenge, but their, <laughs> their chemistry and their teamwork really came through, I mean, really early in the race. So it really became a pleasure. And um, I think it was something that all of us wanted to try again. I remember spending a few days with Kevin Harvick uh, leading up to Pocono. He's making a lot of notes. He was pretty nervous, I think, in the booth that day. Is your anxiety lesson going into year two as a play-by-play -play man, Kevin? Yeah, I learned that um, I need to be informed, and I didn't need to take near as many notes. Um, <laughs> you know, I think after we got through the, you know, the first two segments, for, for me, it felt like everything really started to, to, to flow. Yeah, five laps. Well, that's like, that's like two segments at Pocono. Yeah. So... Um, <laughs> You know, I think as we got through those first two segments, we all got a lot more comfortable. And, and for me, it was enjoyable because you get to hear, you know, things from a, a unique perspective. Um, and hopefully, hopefully this year they give us at least five more minutes to get from the garage up to the, up to the top. We're going to give everyone in here a chance to ask questions in a moment. But first, a couple uh, for the newbies. Brad Keselowski, as we said, was in this race last year, won at Pocono and then was interviewed in victory lane by his teammate, Ryan Blaney, which was very unique. You, you can't plan those uh, magical moments in the world of television. But Brad now will be with us hosting from the Hollywood Hotel. He actually will kick off our driver analyst group this weekend and be with us in the booth at Daytona. But Brad, moving from the race car to a hosting role, what's going to be the biggest challenge for you? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to be as nervous, I think, as Kevin probably was. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I certainly, uh, through the experiences I've had it, being in the broadcast booth, it, it's one, a, a privilege, um, and it's, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to talk to our fans in a new and exciting way, um, and it's uh, an opportunity to kind of, you know, pay it forward for the sport. So I, I really enjoy being a, a part of it. Um, as far as the challenge, you know, keeping up with uh, all the liners and the quips, uh, uh, those guys are good. You know, and uh, Adam, Adam, you're pretty darn good too. So, uh, thankfully, there's a there's a great team here um, to to help everyone. And I just think this is such a, a unique and innovative way to, um, you know, keep the uh, Xfinity telecasts uh, interesting and connected to the Cup level. Uh, Adam, you guys don't have to worry about taking us taking your jobs full time because, uh, you know, we do it once and we get a whole ton of appreciation and say, all right, uh, I, I've got a lot more respect uh, than I ever had for the TV side. So. Um, I think it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's a privilege, it's an opportunity, it, it's, it's fun, it's nerve-wracking on the same side. I get more nerve-wracking, I think, for the broadcast uh, than I do for the race, but uh, all in all, it's good for our fans, and, and the, the things that our fans say to us, whether it's through social media or one-on-one, -on -one, they love it too, and, and that feels good to give them something they like. So Brad will kind of be our version of Chris Myers when we do this at Talladega. That means Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will be Michael Walter, Larry McReynolds. How are we balancing <laughs> that out? Do we know? Huh? Got anybody what? else? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm kidding. 
I'm not going to talk about Alabama as much as Larry Mack does. I know that. <laughs> That's safe, right? Now, I'm looking forward to a, a different role. I think, you know, last year being on pit road, man, it was crazy, you know, to see how quick those uh, pit stops come up, running back and forth and, you know, trying to, you know, process all this information that you're getting and trying to relay it to the fans, to, you know, Kevin and, and those guys back in the booth and, you know, really just keeping up with all the pitch strategies, you know, what was going on. So, you know, I have a new appreciation for not only, you know, everybody on the TV side on camera, but, you know, the pit spotters running up and down trying to get all the information, uh, you know, what our PR people do during the race to, to relay that information from the teams. And it was a cool perspective. I had a lot of fun doing it. And now I'm looking forward to being in the boot or the, the Hollywood Hotel and, you know, seeing it from that side. Bubba, this is your first time, but your buddy Blaney was on pit road last year. So you're going to solicit him for advice? I'll probably go to Eric before I go to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this will be fun. I'm excited. Um, Blaney just gets awkward when he's on camera, so um, so he can't really learn much from that. Um, but it, it'll be good. It'll be good. Now he's going to be pissed off at me the rest of the weekend. I feel, I feel like I should let Blaney retaliate, but instead, in the interest of time, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, we are in the same duel, so. <laughs> <laughs> Developing storylines. Yep, go ahead. Pam, Lewis Franco Reuters. Pam, in the kindest use of the word characters, how, do you, how difficult is it to wrangle these guys? It's not really that. I, I mean, they have such great personalities. I just try to ch give them items and ideas to try to channel their personalities. But they all get along really well. It's not that difficult. It's really just getting them to go to commercial, you know. <laughs> so. Saying to get us to quit talking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's next? Any other questions? Jenna, go ahead. Hey, Brad, last year you had a, um, it was a pretty genuine moment when you kind of took over and went in there to interview Blaney. Um, I assume that was spontaneous, that you didn't know in advance Blaney was going to win. Um, <laughs> but uh, tell me what, why you did that and what that was like for, if, for both of you, I guess. Well, um, yeah, that, you know, just kind of recapping what happened. I got out of the car and, you know, you're, you're hot and sweating. I was still trying to figure out where in the heck I was. And um, Jamie Little, I think, uh, was walking by to, to go there, and I saw Jeremy Bowens walk by, and um, I, I can't remember how it all came together, but somebody said, well, that's really cool, Ryan. And I said, yeah, absolutely, you know, and it's, a, you know, first wins are a big deal, right? Any win's a big deal, but a first one, uh, and it goes without saying you only get one of those. Um, and uh, Jamie looked over at me and said, do you want to talk to him? Do you want to interview him? And I said, yeah, heck yeah. You know, I, I'll never forget um, – when, uh, when I won my first race uh, in Talladega and Dale Jr. and a bunch of other people came over into Victor Lane, how special that was to me. And it just felt like something cool and fun to do. And uh, no, it, it certainly wasn't planned by any stretch of the imagination. But it is, you know, some of those moments that we have in this sport uh, reminds me back to, you know, uh, like when Ned uh, Jarrett, I uh, got to talk about his son winning the Daytona 500 live in real time as it's developing. You know, those things that come up from time to time, I think, are really unique opportunities in our sport that really kind of showcase the human element of what makes it so special. And um, I was I was glad to be a part of it. Um, and uh, it was cool that Ryan did it the day before, and I had a good time doing it that day as well or the next day. Uh, so you never know what opportunities are going to come up. That's part of the fun of, of this uh, format. And uh, I don't think so far we've said anything to get us in trouble. Uh, so hopefully we can keep that going. Uh, but uh, that opportunity last year was, was certainly way up there for me personally. Who's next? Bruce Martin with Speed Sport. How much of a uh, appreciation level do you have now from – you guys are all competitors. You get out after a race. You're still amped up, and you get a microphone put in your face. Now you're the guy's – doing the interviewing. How much has that kind of changed the way you look at that role? I, I think for, for me, the, the part that I enjoy the most is the, re, is the relationship that it creates with the, everybody on this side. And, and you have the, you know, you're able to see all the things that go on behind the scenes and it, and it helps you relate in a different way to um, the, the things that are going on on TV, the needs that happen on TV. 
instead of just the guy that's sitting behind the wheel from a competition standpoint. And the more that you can, you can blend that with, uh, you know, the drivers and, and uh, the partners uh, on the TV side and, and NASCAR and everybody that, that, you know, it evolves around, the more perspectives that you have, the, the better off that it is. So um, I don't know that that really answered your question, but I think that when you mix all that together, it gives everybody a better perspective of what the other side thinks because we, we, we talk a lot. And we communicate a lot, and, and uh, that relationship is is very important. But relationships in general are very important. So, um, you know, it's it's in today's world. And I saw Steve Kerr handed the handed the the clipboard to uh, his players the other day, and and said, "Here, you draw up the plays and, and see how this goes." And, and and so, you know, I think that that camaraderie between um, not only us but with with the TV side helps everybody. But it's so much more fun to egg on that emotion out of somebody from the booth than it is being the guy that has to be egged on and, and filter some of that emotion. Jeff Gordon has done a complete 180. He hasn't. He? Look, Mike, Mike's over here. Yep. <laughs> He's done a complete 180. What is right for the competitor is now not good for TV, and we have to do it this way. And you see that from the booth. You're like, yep, that looks a lot better up here than it does uh, the way that I think it should look. What's the selection process like? Did, were you turned down by six or seven guys and wound up with these? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly, there's a long line waiting to do this, so it was very easy. <laughs> but no, this is our core group of guys. Got deep. Deep. <laughs> That's one last interview we get to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Pam, that, that leads into my question. I was going to ask you, how do you find the right mix, the right personality mix, and how do you make these guys fit so that it's fun for the viewer? I don't know it's, if that it's really me. I think they're all just genuine. I don't try to change them. I just try to encourage them to be themselves, and they just seem to fit. I just think it's kind of a – they're all a piece of the puzzle. It's, it's really just guiding them towards the stories as the race evolves and letting them be themselves. Anybody else? Right here. Right here. All right, go ahead. Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. I'm just curious now with the experience that you have here, do you anticipate it'll be too long when you want to come and sit down and write a thousand word story? <laughs> 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 I know what's your job. <laughs> they saw me do it and they knew they could pull it off, Holly, you know? Anybody else? It's that whole spelling thing. Yep. <laughs> Ryan, um, you're sitting over there. You're mighty quiet. You seem to be a quiet, unassuming guy. Is there some sort of mechanism, a trigger that you hit when it's your time to be on the air? Push the talk button, I guess. Yeah, push the talk button, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the, ear, the person in my ear says, Blaney, they're coming to you. And I'm like, all right. Oh, and then I... <laughs> And then I talk. <laughs> and then whatever comes out, comes out. <laughs> Whether it's nonsense or not. So. It's the quiet ones you got to look out for. I think that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Brian Mabes of Xfinity Racing. This is probably for Clint the most. Are you worried about the Saturday broadcast affecting you going out Friday night in Talladega? <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be, uh, we'll get off. We'll get through everything. It'll be fine. No, it's part you know, of the this research. Is a, this you know? is a fun opportunity for us, and it, it's it. We take it serious. You know, the neatest thing. I've been along Kevin since I came into this sport, and that was literally the first time I've ever witnessed him nervous. Like I could see him that he was nervous, and then once we, you know, got through the first few laps and th through that first segment. It all kind of we we got the hang of it, and and Pam had us. You know, she was babysitting us, and and because that's really what you did. You babysitted us, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, it is fun. It's fun to have that perspective. It's fun to, to sell our sport. I'm really excited about the track that we're doing, you know, this year. Um, Pocono, you just, that's the thing about our sport. You never know what the storyline's going to be. Here we are. We're in, a, you know, we're, we're about half, we're confident and everything's going good. All of a sudden, this fuel mileage and the strategy started coming in. And I mean, you know, the stat guys that are over there and Pam, and there was so much more that was coming to us. We were trying to keep up, you know, and, and we were in over our head big time. I would need a double A in a bad way. 
And but that's you know that was what was cool about it. It was genuine and a lot of fun. And I think Talladega is going to be even that much more. Got time for one more, Jenna? Sorry, I have so many questions, but um, I noticed you changed the race to Talladega this year, which um, potentially news could develop during that race. What happens if that hap if news breaks out? Is are these guys going to cover it like news? Oh, uh, it, it it depends, but I would say that we have everybody like we did last year in the shadows. They'll each have a pit reporter with them, and then we would change. We would make that decision and change into news mode, and. The reporters would take over. Okay, thank you all very much. I, I would say in TV, we love to rehearse. And when these drivers come up because of their practice schedule and commitment to the cup car, they don't get much rehearsal time. So it does speak volumes to their ability to make that transition. So we look forward to that. We thank them for joining us and thank you as well. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, Eric, you want to say anything? You didn't say anything. Hold on. I'm good. Okay. Thanks, thanks for the questions, guys. <laughs> If I can uh, have your attention here in the media center, we're going to start our next media availability. Uh, my name is John Schwartz. I'm on the communications team here at NASCAR, and I am very excited to have some special guests up here with us today uh, celebrating a milestone. Daytona is a place where there are lots of milestones, particularly this year, but um, none, none bigger than uh, what we're about to learn uh, about right now, which is uh, Xfinity's 100 race with us, and I believe we have a Short video to uh, tee that up. Hopefully. Happy 100th race, Xfinity. Happy 100th race, Xfinity. My favorite NASCAR Xfinity Series memory would have to be our championship year in 2014. 100th race. Congratulations. That's amazing. Happy 100th race, Xfinity. My favorite NASCAR Xfinity moment was my first win at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Probably my first NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Kentucky in 2015, winning the first NASCAR Xfinity Series championship. Probably a little bit biased on this one, but it seems to me like that was the best race of the year. <laughs> my favorite NASCAR Xfinity Series memory has got to be my two wins at Daytona. Those are pretty awesome. Congratulations, Xfinity. What an awesome three years. And to go to your 100th race at the Daytona, there's nothing better than that. Happy 100th race, Xfinity. Xfinity, congratulations on your 100th race in NASCAR. Thank you so <laughs> much for everything you do for our sport. And here's to another 100. And here to talk more about uh, Comcast's and Xfinity's uh, time in our sport. Um, Xfinity is proudly our uh, series entitlement sponsor uh, and is also the official entertainment provider of NASCAR. And with us today from Comcast is Matt Letterer, Executive Director of Partnership Marketing. To his left, NASCAR Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer Jill Gregory. And they're also joined by champions that have made their name in the NASCAR Xfinity Series over the past three years. Chris Buescher, Daniel Suarez, and William Byron, as well as Christopher Bell, uh, last year's NASCAR Camping World Truck Series champion, who will start his first full-time season in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this Saturday. And Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, 100 races, what does that mean to Comcast? Yeah, it's, it's exciting. First of all, thanks for having us here, and it's always great to be back here at Daytona, and I think back to... Uh, that very first race and having no idea what we got ourselves into or candidly what we were doing. Um, but to see this come around and us have 99 races, you know, when we, when we figured out that this was a uh, number of hundred, we were kind of in awe. Um, and when I sit back and think about everything that went into it and I look at all the work that my great team that I have back in Philadelphia and our agency partners, um, what really hits me is the amount of relationships, you know, that we've built. And I think that's been the hallmark of our success whether that is with our broadcast partners, our media partners, the track partners, um, the drivers here, the, the time that, that these guys have spent for us, the way they've embraced our brand, we, we make them come into conference rooms and sit down and take one hour brand training sessions and they do it willingly. 
um, and then then they live it for us, and it's um, it's been amazing to see. Um, and then and then our our partners at NASCAR, you know, when we we don't do a lot of long term deals. This is this is a ten year deal. This is year four. We have we have more than a hundred races left to go. Um, I may or may not know the exact total. Um, but we, we don't do those very often, and they're scary for us because our business changes and our business evolves on almost a daily basis. But what, what NASCAR does for us, and they've shown it the way that they've evolved this series, whether it be the, the driver participation, the playoff format, the series logo, leaning in more to names are made here, the, the platform for a marketer evolves so well. So whether it's us wanting to use NASCAR to talk about our video product the way we have for the last three years, uh, you know, touting Xfinity X1 changes the way you experience NASCAR, or what you'll see us do more this year, which is leaning into our internet product. You know, Xfinity Internet, the fastest internet in America. There seems to be a connection there. Uh, I haven't figured it out yet with speed and NASCAR, but something's there. Um, but it's a platform that allows us to do this. And so it doesn't concern us that we have four, you know, six years left or whatever it is because we know it's going to evolve. We know as our business changes, the NASCAR platform is going to allow us as brand marketers to get that message out um, uh, naturally. You know, the other thing that I look back on with, with pride and look forward to growing is how we've been able to use this massive platform, right? We were looking today at the Partner Summit and to see 58 million users and billions, three viewers and billions on social and the digital growth. To be able to use this platform as a company and take it and give back to the community um, from a Comcast brand standpoint has been uh, amazing. Our Comcast Community Champion of the Year platform is without a doubt the proudest thing that we do, not in NASCAR, but in all of our partnerships. And the support that you guys have given, the drivers have given, the industry has given, uh, we can't thank you know, anybody enough for that. So it's been, it's been fantastic. So we're really thankful. The way we feel is we're kind of in awe that we're, our brand is celebrating a 100th race at, at Daytona. I mean, how cool is that? And uh, we're really excited about the next 100, 200 plus races left. Well, that's well said. And 100 race ag races ago, it was a big shift for NASCAR, and you've done so much on your activation. But also, Jill, we shifted in our positioning of this series, and you know, names are made here. And talk a little bit about how that the series and its competition has lived up to that positioning that, that you helped steer. Well, I could talk about how we've lived up to the Names Are Made Here platform, but you can see sitting next to me, there's the proof. those are the proof points right here because the, the drivers that are making uh, their mark in our sport are racing in the Xfinity series. And so I think that, you know, to Matt's point earlier, you know, we sat down with Xfinity as a partner. Um, they may not have known what to do in NASCAR, but they knew how they wanted to build their business and help us support this series. That was at a time when we were looking to kind of bolster the identity of this series. Uh, so they've been fantastic partners with us on and off the track to do that. Um, you know, we work with them day in and day out on not just how we market the series and, and market to their customers, but also some of the competition ch changes that you've seen, you know, different tweaks that we've made to the formats. They've been, Matt and his team have been right at the table with us, so it's been a huge partnership. Uh, they've, Matt and his team have always been very involved in the names are made here positioning, and it's great to see it come to life with the folks, uh, the drivers uh, on my left. And so to those drivers on your left, we've all watched you, the three champions watch you climb the ladder here in NASCAR. And it, it would be great to hear from each of you about what your favorite memory from the series was. Start with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, um, you know, for me, uh, that uh, 2015 season, uh, my favorite memory was, I'm sure we'll all say the same thing, but, but winning a championship at, uh, you know, one of the top divisions in NASCAR and, and getting to do it. Um, you know, with Xfinity coming in as a, a new partner for that season, uh, made for a, a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot that season as well as I think everyone at Xfinity did as well. Uh, and, and, you know, was able to go to the racetrack and, and you know, really, really realize how much they were trying to, to rejuvenate the, the title sponsorship of, of the series and try and make it into something that, you know, we, we recognize and, and you know, push the names are made here brand and uh, you know it was something that that really got me heading in the right direction you know the uh, you know the championship year there uh, we got to the end of it and uh, you know it was uh, the only only one without a chase and that was um, you know a little bit a little bit different than it is now but uh, the nerves were uh, were no different there at the end I can promise you that and then uh, you know post uh, post homestead getting to to go to Philadelphia and I get to get to meet everybody with with Comcast and, and Xfinity. 
uh, and tour the city was um, you know one of the one of the coolest backstage uh, access deals I've ever gotten to be a part of, um, and, and we've gotten to do uh, a lot of cool things uh, since. But that was um, you know one of the more in depth. So really appreciative of uh, everything they've done for for our sport. Uh, glad we can say that uh, we're going to be seeing you for uh, another couple hundred more, and just um, you know appreciate the opportunity to uh, to get to get to have my year there and. Um, you know, looking forward to coming back and, and making some more races as uh, as we can make it happen. Daniel, your favorite uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series memory for you? Well, I guess I'm going to sound a little boring, but uh, you know, every you can win championships every year, and uh, and the way that that we were able to to get it done, it was in the first year of the new format of playoffs, and uh, that year. Uh, was so competitive. I mean, uh, I just felt like we had to, we were in the position where whoever was going to be able to win everything was going to win the championship. And uh, luckily, you know, everything worked out well for us, winning the pole position, the most laps, winning the race and winning the championship. So it was a perfect weekend for us. And uh, and definitely that, that would be a, a weekend that I will never forget. But as well, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning of the, of my career in the Xfinity Series, making that a step from the KN Series, which I didn't have a lot of experience. I, everything in my career has been happening pretty quick. So the KN Series to the Xfinity Series, I didn't know, I didn't have any idea what I was doing the first year in 2015. And, and things ended up working out well. And, uh, and that year was special for that reason as well. I just feel like maybe one of the most, uh, you know, most learning years that I have had in my career so far. And obviously that led us, uh, you know, that gave us the opportunity to, to fight for a championship in 2016. So just excited to be here, excited to, to, to put my, my name in that list of names that are made here. And, uh, and I'm going to be racing this, this Saturday night, so this Saturday afternoon. So I'm, I'm ex still excited uh, of, you know, every time that Joe Gibbs, my team, Coach Gibbs, asks me the question if I want to keep racing Xfinity. I don't. I don't wait two seconds to say yeah. Yeah, just put me put me in the car and, and we we'll, we'll be we we'll be having some fun. So excited to to be here in a, in a race week. Well, William, it's, it feels like only a few days since you stepped out of the car as a Xfinity Series champion. Talk about your favorite memory. Yeah, obviously, just like these guys said, the biggest memory you have is that championship. But I think that the thing the some of the things that Xfinity did for us that were really cool during the year were the Dash for Cash races. Uh, being able to run for that and have some incentive outside of just winning the race. Um, you know, when some of the cup guys are in the race, it gave us a chance to race against our competitors. And the format this year was really cool with the um, with ha with having to be the top two in the first stage and then be the top two in the second stage and, and go after it in the, in the third one was, was pretty neat. So I would say that was cool, winning the Dash for Cash at Dover. And then, uh, and then the wins that we had, um, the way that Xfinity was able to, to market myself and other drivers and, and kind of get us out in the spotlight and bridge the gap between us and the Cup Series was, was really important. So, but obviously, the Xfinity Championship was, was the coolest part of last year, and I always look back on that as something that I'll uh, keep in mind, and, and you never have a chance to really do that again. So that was really special. And Christopher, you're taking a big step here in your rookie season in this series. Um, talk a little bit about what you're looking forward to. Yeah, well, it's it's special to be a part of Xfinity's 100th race. I remember watching the, the first race a couple years ago, so it's pretty special to be a part of it. And uh, the names are made here. Slogan is, is perfect, and, you know, I, I want to follow in these guys' footstep and, and create my own name. So thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Um, and now we'll, we'll open it up to questions uh, here in the Media Center. We'll start with Lewis. Hi, Matt. Lewis Frank from Reuters. So in the current business environment, some teams have to run different drivers, you know, during different races. I'm not even talking about cup drivers. What's the challenge in branding when, in the case, you might have a winner who does a one-off or does a road course win? How do you handle that and, and still benefit? Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. It takes a lot of preseason communication with the teams. You know, we had, um, I'll forget the number, but a couple dozen drivers last week, as an example, in Charlotte. We did a photo shoot. Christopher was there. And, you know, we did the photo shoot, but we also had them come in and, and train. And there were some guys that are not going to be there full time. They're running a handful of races. Um, it's, it's part of the relationship that we've created with the teams to get ahead of it. And it's been a change for us because we're typically not 
and as marketers, we don't look at those types of things. But to understand what they're, you know, who's going to race, those are, you know, marketing platforms for us. Um, and so it's, it's, it's that early preseason communication. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't know that till two weeks before Daytona and sometimes even shorter and sometimes during the season. But uh, we have great relationships with the team and we just leverage those. We'll go with Ivan here in the front. Buenas tardes, Iván Martínez de Tres y México para Daniel Suárez. Are you sure for me or for the... Daniel Suárez. That's for sure. La pregunta va a ser en español para los fans que están ahorita. Tuvimos la fortuna de poderte ver ser campeón en NASCAR Spinity Series en el 2016. ¿Cuál es el compromiso que asumió Daniel Suárez para el siguiente año y poder escalar a la, a la gran categoría de, de NASCAR? ¿Cuál fue el compromiso? Bueno, es un, obviamente es un gran compromiso. Eh, eh, obviamente fue muy, muy divertido tenerte a ti ahí en esa, en esa gran fin de semana, gran carrera. Eh, y también eh, yo creo que como, como vamos creciendo en, en el mundo de NASCAR, se van creciendo los compromisos y, y obviamente las metas y resultados. Eh, creo que, que en años anteriores eh, hemos ido trabajando muy duro para poder dar a... a a, a conocer a mucha gente, qué es lo que estamos tratando de hacer, no solamente aquí en Estados Unidos, pero en toda Latinoamérica. Y, y, y obviamente eh, muy orgulloso de ser esa, esa, esa persona eh, suertuda que, que puede representar a, a México y, y, a, y a toda Latinoamérica en, en este gran país que, que, que obviamente podemos correr en, en, en casi todos los estados de Estados Unidos. Entonces, contento de estar aquí, contento de, de estar en esta posición y espero poder representaros de la mejor manera. Any more questions for our group? Jenna. Jennifer, AP. Matt, do you feel like you guys put all this work into these guys and, and make them names, and then they run off and join the Cup Series? No, no, we love it. Um, we really, um, it, it's a testament to, to what we're doing. And also, candidly, now when they go to the Cup Series and have success, they know who we are. They know what our brand is. As John started, not only are we the series partner, but we're the official entertainment provider of NASCAR. So as we want to do things and grow into the cup, we don't have to re-educate these guys too much. Uh, so no, we love it. I, I remember um, you know, each of these guys, different moments. But I remember, uh, and he doesn't know this, but 2016, watching William, I think, in the K&N. And it was in Dover. I think you clinched your championship there. And I said, we're going to hand that kid a trophy. And when we do, we're never going to see him in our series again. But, but that's a good thing. We want those types of stories. We want this. And, and the success that they have on the cup side helps us. I think it's also a testament to Matt and his team that they invested time to make these relationships early. And I think it was really important when you guys joined uh, to build team relationships, to get to know the drivers and, and wish them well as they moved on. So I, I put a lot of credit to you, to Peter, your Maggio. You're much more than just a series partner. You've really invested your time uh, into getting to the, making the relationships that I think are so important. We'll keep rolling with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Matt, this is for Matt. Matt, when you look at metrics and seeing what you're getting for the, what you're spending, um, is television still the number one thing you look at in terms of television rating, or is there other metrics you look at yeah. and say this is really key for us? Yeah, I wouldn't say we rank it. You know, but television's part of it. You know, we, we absolutely look at viewership, and we don't look at necessarily from a rating standpoint. Although we're we're we're, we're always very happy to know where NASCAR ranks over the weekend versus other sports. But we will do a lot of measurement uh, to our customers and to our potential customers in terms of if you're a NASCAR fan, are you aware of our partnership? How has that changed your consideration of our brand? Are you likely to recommend all of those metrics in addition to evaluating the brand exposure we're getting? And another, another thing we didn't touch on is also the, the Comcast business or B2B element here. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of brands in the world of NASCAR, and we've been able to forge relationships on that side where some brands are now customers of ours. I mean, we have a, a great partnership through Joe Gibbs uh, where FedEx is now a Comcast business customer. So there are, there are numerous metrics. Our, our quarterly reporting um, is a, a very long meeting, and there's a lot of different things that go into it. Craig, over here. Just as a follow-up to that, Matt, how do you how do you quantify this? You know, how can you you go back to your to your to those partners and say here's because you know we've heard for years that Nielsen's we don't we don't rely on those anymore. We don't have sweeps. We don't, but yet it's still there. But yet we know that the the audience is digesting sports differently. 
How do you quantify that in order to present it to those partners and yeah. show the value of your sponsorship? It's, it's what I'll often talk about is it's an equation. All of our partnerships are equation. There's not one thing. Okay, and you know, if viewership is flat or going down, okay, that's gonna go down, but how are you driving the other parts? How are you driving your social engagement up? How are you driving your digital? How are we driving B2B? How are we doing in terms of on-site and selling to our customers? How are we re rewarding our current customers? So it's not one metric. Um, it's, a, it's a summation of all of these things. And it's sometimes a challenge because there's you know, people who will think, oh, you know, hey, we saw a story, your ratings are down X or whatever it is, and go, this isn't working. Well, no, there's a lot more to this, and not just NASCAR, all of our partnerships, that you know, sum up to that ROI story. One last call for questions. Okay, with that, before we let this group go, I think uh, Jill has uh, something special to present to Matt. All right, Matt, well, this is not a surprise since you <laughs> saw it in the room beforehand, but we wanted to present to you with this uh, commemorative print signed by all the drivers that are here today, uh, and thank you for your partnership you. Uh, for the first 100, well, 99 races, um, and looking forward to many more. We'll get Christopher's signature on that That's 200th right. one. <laughs> you better, bro. <laughs> a good answer. Yeah? Yeah. 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 It's a good answer. <laughs>